Did you did run. you guys hear that? Say that again. <laughs> 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 to run this existing fleet, they need twenty percent more pilots, mm-hmm. as well as. What's up? What's up? What's up? Welcome back to India's number one pilot podcast. We are on episode forty three, forty two. <laughs> Lost the count. Yep. So many things to talk about new things absolutely in terms of aviation there have been many developments actually in past two weeks right since yes. we shot the last yes, podcast yeah. uh, bombay mumbai had um, air show then yes. wings uh, this is there wings air show is there actually we should have gone to wings right yes wings mm-hmm. and plus this thing so i mean uh, I got occupied with uh, airline training, so right. I had to go to Delhi right. during yes. that air show, and it was on the same day when I was leaving. Yep. So now it's <laughs> it's like you don't uh, get to plan things. Yeah. The airline or the that group is, that plan things that for you, true. and then that if you true. have time around that, yeah. then you go and visit Absolutely. such shows. But if if someone is an aspiring pilot, definitely uh, keep a track on those events. Then if you're not able to visit, that's completely okay. But you can always go on YouTube and uh, search for uh, the uh, highlights of the show. And uh, when you watch those highlights, you get to know something which is upcoming in the aviation industry. For example, Akas Airline has given an order of 150 Boeing 737. Yeah, that's a in big the, order. In the yes. in such a short period of time after hmm. commencement of airline operation yeah absolutely. i think it it was a record that uh, in such a short span an airline has given such a big number of orders correct, correct, of four correct. aircraft yeah. yes yeah. absolutely so there used to be a regulation related to number of air airplanes that one airline has uh, in order to go international right so what was it yes that regulation was uh, 20 airplanes minimum are mm-hmm. required with an airline and the airline should have minimum experience of 5 years in domestic sector mm-hmm. before operating international flights correct so that was the regulation earlier mm. that was uh, there earlier but now it has changed and uh, as long as the airline has 20 airplanes now it can operate globally international flights understood yeah. because that was the reason actually kingfisher bought uh, sahara airlines in order for them to go international okay. because sahara mm. was more than 5 years mm. old and uh, kingfisher was Sorry. not so they bought that airline that made the merger as more than 5 years old wow so. <laughs> yes <laughs> but now but eventually <laughs> it's just to aircraft yeah. uh, yeah. so yeah that's that's good yeah and uh, another thing that changed in past uh, two weeks was new car civil aviation regulation is yes there which has updated fdtl uh yes the fdtl has been revised and pilots are very happy to see yes. that fdtl pilots are, i myself i'm very happy to see a revised fdtl which will be effective from 1st of april and yes. uh, So there have so been before before we move on uh, to the rules and regulations which have changed can you explain what is fdtl yes fdtl is flight duty time limitation and there will be requirement of uh, the pilots maximum number of hours of flight time and flight duty time that a pilot can operate in one day then in one week then in one month or Three months that is consecutive ninety days period or consecutive three sixty five days period that is almost a year. So all these regulations then are laid down in that FTTL, and there will be mention of how much is the weekly rest requirement. It has to be given to a pilot that in between two flights how much rest is required to be given. What is the transport time need to be calculated? Transport time is. not considered towards either rest period nor towards duty period because mm-hmm. that is in the middle right so yes. that's the reason why uh, that how much time for transport needs to be accounted for that is mentioned over there apart from that if in case a pilot operates 
at night that is night time is between 12 to 5 which was there in current uh, FDTL which is uh, you know going to be effective till March 31st 2024 and uh, that time between 0000 to 0500 is night time whereas from 1st uh, April onwards they have changed it up to 0600 hours okay. because even if uh, your reporting time is 0505 hours in the morning then also you might have to wake up at 330 mm -hmm. depending on where you stay from yes. airport 3 o'clock or 330 mm -hmm. and then you have to get ready and then go for a flight so uh, these are things to be taken into account and these things in detail for you know ultra long haul operations for long haul operations is all mentioned in FDTL. So that's in short about FDTL. Right. So why is FDTL there? Just explain real quick. Because uh, airlines want to optimize the operations and airline definitely want to optimize the uh, flight crew as well as cabin crew and yeah. their workforce. So every operator or an airline to make the business lucrative and to keep it viable there is a requirement to utilize them to a certain limit now when it is utilized to that point where it, it takes toll on pilots rest period and since this is a very safety sensitive sector mm -hmm. and uh, pilots rest is very important and paramount if you consider safe flight operation so that is the reason why Toward, from pilot point of view, it is important to take care of that rest period and pilot should be able to say that, okay, this is a rest period, so I am entitled for this. So the next flight has to happen after that. So these things need to be written in black and white mm -hmm. so that there is no discrepancy and dispute between pilots and operator and things are written in black and white. and they need to that needs to be followed right. so that's the reason why there is a requirement of fdtl mm. and that needs to be abided by operator and pilots right. both so if after minimum rest period if pilot is scheduled for a duty he cannot say no i mm -hmm. won't go for a flight right and plus airline will also not schedule that pilot for a flight where his rest period is not complete so it works in both ways. So it's it's to balance uh, crew optimization, like uh, resource optimization, and uh, to make sure that there is no fatigue in mm. pilots yes, while yes, they operate. Absolutely. Right? So yeah. fatigue builds in over time when you operate on minimum mm. rest now, since the minimum rest period has been increased and uh, after looking at many previous past uh, experiences from pilots because this new FDTL is not mm -hmm. just in force overnight. There have been many observations and many experiments and many projects that have happened and have been in force for a few months. Like for example, so in last three years, I in my, you know, mm. uh, tenure of captaincy i mean the you FDTL are you will be <laughs> flying again it's not like ah, in my <laughs> yeah. tenure yeah. captaincy in preceding three years hiding the valley doesn't <laughs> actually everyone knows yeah. you're pregnant <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> i am so it, in the last preceding three years the FDTL yeah. has changed about uh, three times now this is the third time it's going mm -hmm. to change mm -hmm. and um, so the previous FDTL was in such a manner that um, there was a rest period. It was it was different, I would mm -hmm. say, that many aspects uh, are con taken into account there. Mm -hmm. But uh, since, if you consider in India, there was a very important rule which was there in the previous FTTL, mm -hmm. which was in force in uh, 2018 and all. So that time, two consecutive midnight operations were not allowed. What is consecutive midnight is? If you operate a flight in uh, between 0000 hours to 
0500 hours so midnight on one day. 12 and uh, 2 yeah 12 to 5 12 midnight to 5, 12 yes. to 5. So next day also same then yeah. next day you cannot you are not allowed to operate okay. flight during that time so generally in international flights we operate during that time so because of that rule mm. we used to get a longer layover and we used to be very happy during mm. that time mm. so when i was a senior first officer and when i was operating those under those uh, fdtl that particular fdtl mm. so that time i used to enjoy international layovers because we used to get 48 hours layover because right. of this uh, rule mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden uh, because internationally globally majority of the authorities do allow consecutive midnight operations for two days consecutive midnight operations for yeah, two, two days, two two days. days. Huh. no even third day is is midnight operation uh, so that depends on the uh, authority to authority okay. i cannot mm -hmm. comment on a mm -hmm. particular but for dgca for dgca and uh, no two now only in the previous Mm -hmm. So I'm just so when you were a captain, mm -hmm. uh, when you you were flying as a captain, and uh, at that time, what was the FTTL like? So when I was a senior first officer, yeah. that time, consecutive midnights was not allowed. Mm -hmm. During my uh, transition to become a captain, it changed, and consecutive midnights were allowed. Mm -hmm. Now consecutive midnights is allowed once, and th then after you have a rest period. And then again, you can have consecutive midnight during that week. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it can happen like four nights in a week, oh. which is mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually, if it continues to happen over time, it can take a toll on pilot's health. And yeah. uh, since it was observed mm -hmm. and recently in uh, when this regulation uh, FDTL changed back in 2019, thereafter... Again, these, uh, you know, uh, new rules were implemented and then we were not getting those two days labor <laughs> international. <laughs> so <laughs> that was the reason why uh, we were kind of sad in that sad aspect. Sad and, and um, <laughs> potentially <laughs> exposed to risk of fatigue, right? Uh, like. Yeah, so when you go there, then because you have flown mm -hmm. through night, mm -hmm. you have to sleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you wake up maybe for whatever lunch or to go out mm -hmm. for maybe two, three hours. Then you come back and you have to operate again another night. Mm -hmm. So you have to sleep before a flight again. So you don't get much time mm -hmm. to really enjoy that place. Mm -hmm. So this is just you know pilot yeah, yeah. point yeah, of view yeah absolutely absolutely and uh, so because of that if you continue to do this over time then mm -hmm. and if you are you know when you fly overnight and if you are uh, landing mm -hmm. at airports like uh, you know which are critical airfields mm -hmm. okay so in that case there is a possibility like calicut you know the mm -hmm. middle east calicut flights and then mangalore flights so you are landing there after operating these consecutive midnight and then you're landing with the uh, fatigue and you know you mm -hmm. are sleepy and you're landing early morning mm -hmm. and it's a challenging uh, airfield to land where yes you cannot uh, possibly mm -hmm. overshoot even a little the tabletop runway so you have to be very very precise with what you yeah. are doing and uh, so it is demanding mm -hmm. quite a lot so because of that uh, there have been certain uh, you know tests carried out in which there has been fatigue monitoring machine mm -hmm. was uh, put up on pilots who wanted to volunteer in that particular yeah, it was in beta project. right like it was in test uh, mode right it e was so I believe yeah. they were testing the routes which rip, which gets uh, most number of fatigue cases. Mm -hmm. So with the timings, let's say Mumbai Delhi flight. So if mm -hmm. it is 2 a.m. in the night, then uh, 4 a.m. you reach Delhi and then mm -hmm. a report was taken. Like how fatigue is the pilot. Mm -hmm. huh. So they was analyzing the data for each and every route. Like what is the fatigue factor mm -hmm. for each route for what time yes, and what yes. number of sectors. So they were collecting the data and then... <laughs> If they find out that, okay, this particular sector has 
a high fatigue factor then they would change something about their route or change mm-hmm. the timing so airbus has come up with this fatigue monitor it is uh, it has come from airbus itself right, yeah, yeah. Right. it's fatigue monitoring uh, device mm-hmm. and uh, changing of the routes is a part which comes after complaints of one particular mm-hmm. route is there by many pilots mm-hmm. and like that pattern i would say yes yes so that pattern so that time will change pattern, not the route yeah yeah the route will remain the same yes if in case there are two sectors then maybe mm. it will be split in Correct. two sets of crew mm. two pilots mm. two sets of uh, crew as in two and captain one first of the two of them like that so four of them will do mm. so things like that but uh, when we talk about a certain time of the day and then it is affecting that particular uh, crew anyway then they are uh, you know reconsidering this they were reconsidering mm-hmm. this fdtl and eventually after thorough study and after uh, doing a lot of analysis dgc has come up with the new regulation in which only once in one week consecutive midnight is allowed mm-hmm. okay and after that the rest period needs to be adequate enough and on the top of it uh, weekly rest from 36 hours is increased to 48, 48 hours, hours including two local midnights which is amazing like plus for so the night happy for this yes. like otherwise <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah in yes. short for pilots this is what's what's yeah. what you think this is good yes it's very good like She'll i get was time for a baby. you know yeah <laughs> i was actually she'll get time to play with the baby will get time to play with the baby <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? uh, yeah. Two days you get, two days I get, so two days she gets. So Six days. Very happy. So I was very happy after. Sorry. And probably mm-hmm. Dr. Rakesh will get one, one day. day. One day. So, <laughs> so <laughs> maybe he has some. <laughs> I was very happy after reading this uh, FDTL because, uh, you know, uh, earlier it used to be we fly like six days a week. Mm-hmm. One day we get rest. and then next day again we have a flight maybe afternoon or mm-hmm. evening so it used to be just minimal yeah. and uh, i mean then flying all the time so this is very good like much much better yeah. compared to previous time. i mean uh you see it's for someone uh, who has actually not flown that okay. rigorously hmm. for that person to understand that it's flying correct. flying can become tiring too correct, is correct. is a different perspective but now you have 5000 plus hours and yes. at that point you think that that you want at least 48 hours but correct, correct. when you were just released you would be like okay make me fly yeah. seven seven so days a week right that like time, yeah <laughs> i used to i was on a contract where i used to get eight days off in a month Okay, oh. which is as good as if that was a different contract mm-hmm. than what is uh, there at present. Okay, and uh, that time, every week we used to get two days off, which were given to us as per our contract on our roster. So, uh, in those two days, one day I used to bid for flights, <laughs> if I, because I used to be legal, <laughs> because that rule was not right. there. Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, plus. there has been cases where a lot of pilots have been temporarily unfit some of them have been permanently unfit and some pilots mm-hmm. while going for a flight you know maybe two couple of cases that have happened in which they have collapsed before a flight so these instances these fatigue reports mm-hmm. have uh, you know showed that pilots rest period needs to be yeah. increased so because Mm, see i mean yeah that's that's all true the point is even for authorities to find that sweet spot where airlines yeah. still remain sustainable Correct. okay and uh, pilots are still providing enough value to the airline Correct. and and pilots are not uh, fatigued and performing at their best for any authority to find that sweet spot is also challenging correct correct but dgca has the regulator yeah has come up <laughs> with a solution for that yes. now let's see how long this one remains and then if there hopefully, is next update <laughs> hopefully no 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 yes and uh, plus for the be. night operations uh, they have limited the landings to two yes earlier it used to be 
you can do hmm. so during that wcl time wcl is <laughs> window of circadian law <laughs> window of circadian law which yeah. is between uh, 2 am to 6 am in the morning like mm-hmm. 5:59 to be precise so that is wcl so where why is it so significant because during that time your uh, reflexes and your uh, energy levels are pretty low and mm, you feel sleepy mm-hmm. and that is the reason why uh, you, i mean technical terms you can it is termed as wcl yeah yeah okay. it is circadian rhythm circadian Windows rhythm circadian. is because of the natural mm-hmm. melatonin secretion secretion and the adenosine levels mm-hmm. in human body like brain yeah. so as you wake up the adenosine starts to build up and yeah that is eventually it reaches to a point when you start feeling sleepy so yeah that is the circadian right. rhythm and and it is always at night that is why iphone becomes dull in color after sunset because your eye does not want to see white light mm. if you yeah, change yeah. so after sunset so thing. so the screen tinge becomes little bit yellow such as the sunset that mm. is why so so your brain like uh, eyes and brain does not feel that it is morning mm-hmm. time to wake mm-hmm. up mm-hmm. so not to see bright and white lights during night is for the sleep correct correct because if you do then your circadian rhythm is messed up correct correct yeah anyway so Should i ask you, <laughs> is, you <laughs> no 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 <laughs> 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 no <laughs> i've just read about it so i yeah, just yeah, de- went I in detail on that uh-huh. but circadian rhythm is we are actually supposed to be sleeping at night like let's not go into biochemistry of that mm-hmm. like, i mean because it uh, has no value addition so we are mm-hmm. as humans we are designed to and and mm-hmm. uh, we are evolved not designed <laughs> we are no no devices we are evolved to sleep at night Good. but for pilots it's not possible so despite of that uh, circadian rhythm interruption we need to perform at best of our abilities right so that is why that Good. is all that is. in the previous uh, fdtl which was which is right now in force uh, from 2019 to 2024 in the beginning there were more than two flights during wcl time were allowed so if let's say a pilot uh, starts the duty at 9 or 10 pm at night and then flies let's say three sectors or even four sectors that was legal Mm-hmm. till morning 10 whereas now during uh, from april 1st onwards the new mm-hmm. fdtl states that you can only do two sectors during that time right so and uh, that's good so that the uh, the more number of takeoffs and landings are the amount of uh, workload on pilots is more during that phase because that is a critical phase of flight mm-hmm. and that's the reason why those phases need to be kept minimum in order to reduce the uh, stress on pilots during mm-hmm. critical phase of flight and during wcl so yes and the topic we are discussing today so people who are not from aviation background they wouldn't know anything about it yeah. and uh, i have come across a news article that pilot refuses to fly the aircraft so mm-hmm. the news reporter likes to make it spicy in the headlines and stuff but they don't know the underlying factor why is the pilot refusing to fly the aircraft his or her fdtl might have busted right and uh, similar thing uh, like when i was in delhi the fog was yeah. so dense i have uh, shared it on my instagram story as well so basically uh, like when i went to delhi uh like it took me one to one and a half hour from here to go to the airport to board flight and everything then to was in the flight from there i went to noida where my i was put up in noida so the whole journey took around 6 to 7 hours and then after that thing i had only one thing to eat and sleep i didn't have much energy to study or to go out and stuff right and then uh, next day after resting for around 12 15 hours i had a sim uh for i have a, i had a same uh, schedule 
and then again i had uh, like 12 to 15 hours of rest and again one more sim and sim so that rest period is very important uh, as the new regulations is coming up like when we get two consecutive days off that will definitely help pilot in the long run right now let's say if if i get to fly like seven days a week i will do it okay right. but in the long run like flying for seven days a week like for 10 15 20 years 25 years that is not practically uh feasible Feasible. to our body because we grow old like and that reputation of wocl night flights uh, the sleep cycle then the fatigue so it all comes up and at the end it will grow so this fdtl i'm yeah. really happy with uh, yeah, yeah, what yeah. they have done but what will this do to the airline is they will need to hire more pilots absolutely yeah. yes so so by airlines have already analyzed this and airlines have come up with a number that they will need about 20% more pilots oh wow yeah so uh, to function did and you to did you guys hear that say that again to, <laughs> <laughs> to <laughs> run this existing fleet they need 20% more pilots mm -hmm. as well as so explain that why uh, decreased fdtl okay like total hours might not be reduced okay but um these fdtl revisions why would those require airlines to hire more pilots yes because the amount of rest period which is required to be given to pilots is increased so to operate those flights which are required to be operated let's say in a day a certain airline operates thousand mm. flights another airline operates 2000 flights a day so if in case the number of unavailable days by pilots increase then definitely to fly those flights or to operate those flights due on those days they will need to hire more mm. pilots so now if uh, for one airplane if uh, 12 pilots are required like six captains and six first officers yeah that's a rule mm. of thumb right so mm. now 20% more that means another two to three more pilots are required in order to keep that airplane flying 24/7 mm. yeah. yeah so arguably you can say that that instead of 12 now 14 mm. to 14 15 pilots to uh, would be yes, required yes, and then there are so many airplanes in order mm -hmm. already yes absolutely so so many airplanes in order now boeing 737 order is also placed uh, by akasa as you said apart from that even air india has uh, placed about close to um, you know just over 150 airplanes so the number of boeing 737 orders is increasing as mm -hmm. opposed to you know in recent mm -hmm. past it was just 320 uh, and even 320 orders mm -hmm. is lined up which will be more than you know, delivered mm -hmm. in next few years in next coming 10 years as well as uh, airbus and boeing both have the, the giant manufacturers of mm -hmm. commercial mm -hmm. airplanes they both have uh, you know projected that and they have seen growth in indian aviation market and that is the reason why they have invested in indian aviation mm -hmm. and uh, Airbus has come up with the largest pilot training facility in terms of 20 simulators in wow. India. Right. That is in Hyderabad and uh, yeah. So that is one is in Bangalore also, right? Which is going to be uh, inaugurated this week, I guess. In Bangalore, Boeing has the first a uh, facility outside US, which was inaugurated mm -hmm. yesterday. Okay. And uh, nice. this is a great news for Indian aviation that uh, you know these major manufacturers are investing so uh, recently boeing projected that uh, around 37000 pilots would be required in the next 20 years for south asia so oh, that's right. a huge number that's and huge. Uh, we do see a lot of pilots retiring as well and uh, with this huge number of aircrafts on order indian aviation market is going to be the fastest growing market for the next 10 years 10 to 20 years yeah absolutely definitely it yeah. looks like that but that said also these number of pilots include experienced pilots as well and uh, 
captains as well so mm-hmm. new vacancies yes sure i mean right now we'd expect that that every single day there should be a vacancy but like it was in 2023 right now it has little bit slowed down right i just think 2024 has just started 2024 yeah, has just started <laughs> and yeah, for sure. the uh, for the fact in this month itself there were two vacancies one for atr yeah. and one for ac20 yeah but that is a internal recruitment no, vacancy no open vacancy. open vacancy yeah atr is is something like you just do the type rating and walk to the airline be it air india or <laughs> <laughs> that is how it is all the all the instructors are recruited for atr for yes, now. Yes, like yes. all instruct pretty much most instructors are not all most instructors are that is because uh, instructors have experience on multi-engine. propeller airplane and uh, multi engine airplane as well so for them to transition to turboprop and to do those that manual flying is easier for them and they can do a better job at it that is the reason why airlines prefer to hire instructors on turbo prop airplanes so if the instructors from flight schools have about more than 2 to 3000 hours with atpl then they are hired as senior first officer yeah, yeah. if they don't have atpl then they are mm-hmm. still hired as first officer if they clear all the rounds of uh, airline selection process right right so as uh, we have uh, discussed about the projected growth of uh, indian aviation and uh, right now we are in the month of january soon in february and march the 12th board exams would be getting over and uh, there are a lot of aspiring pilots who already have started their research yeah. and yeah. they have planned everything okay that uh, after uh, clearing their exam let's say the best time to start pilot training would be as soon as you are done with your Absolutely. 12th exams Absolutely. so i am in touch with a few aspiring pilots who are giving their exam in the month of feb yeah. they've already decided that they will be joining cnta for their yeah. dgca ground school yeah. and uh, do their dgca exam preparation until they get their results correct, and once correct. they get their results then they appear for the dgc exam yeah. so computer number application and yes. then then appear for the dgc exams right yes and uh, what this uh, tells us about that they are very much aware about what's going on True. because they watch our podcast regularly yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah, how yeah, they yeah. come to know right. and uh, we are here to guide them so if they start the dgc exam preparation after the 12th they are in a position to start their flight training in the month of december or january as soon as they get their results their computer mm-hmm. number so they don't waste much time after that yeah. waiting for computer Correct. number waiting yeah. for visa yeah. and stuff Correct. Correct. plus they also get done with their medicals most Absolutely. of them are already done with their class 2 medicals and uh, after exam many of them have already planned so right now is the golden period of aviation in the month of january itself we had uh, a couple of vacancies and this year we'll also see yeah. uh, more number of vacancies mm-hmm. because the aircraft which are on order will be uh, getting delivered by mid of 2024 and then every month there'll be two three aircraft okay. for every airline mm-hmm. so more number of vacancies are to be expected starting mid of 2024 mm-hmm. So right now, if someone is a CPL holder, they can start doing the type rating, select the aircraft. Right now, if you see A320, 737, ATR, you can select all three. Yep. All of those three are good options because yep. A320, you have orders. 737, Akasa placed recently, or order of 150 aircrafts, and ATR, you know, people who are currently pilots in ATR. Some mm-hmm. other day, they wish to fly. the airbus a320 or the boeing or mm-hmm. they move to wide body mm-hmm. so eventually people will progress so again the vacancy for atr mm-hmm. will come out so okay. all this three a320 737 and atr are good type ratings yes uh, because some pilots have got preference of uh, staying at home every day some of them don't like to go on layovers mm-hmm. for them atr is a good option mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. 
for uh, staying at you know, home as in coming back home and sleeping in your own bed right like yeah, yeah so yeah. there are no layovers <laughs> that <Yeah>. means staying <laughs> back no home. staying at home is staying just staying at home uh, <laughs> no. so some pilots prefer uh, that they would want to uh, operate a flight and come mm. back home without going on a layover and uh, in those cases for such pilots atr is a good option too because mm. uh, places where atr flights operate right. those are in most cases those are uh, operational during daytime mm. hours and after operating a flight they are back home and uh, yeah they can enjoy that you know morning to evening cycle of mm-hmm. their, their body cycle is like set to that yes yeah, so, so in uh, when when a pilot is flying for the atr i believe they start early in the morning and then they are back by night right so it's by afternoon or afternoon evening, or evening depending yeah. on the sectors they do correct uh-huh. correct okay yeah. great another small intricacy that that while during this conversation i realized was um, right now because of pratt and whitney engine problem there are mm-hmm. certain airplanes being grounded right like mm-hmm. one of the go air shut down reason was that but yeah go air pilots are absorbed now uh, absorbed now in either akasa or other airlines that have a320 yeah but uh, akasa is hiring go air pilots mm-hmm. as well mm-hmm. like one of my friend got into akasa who was a go air pilot uh, Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, time to buy. Let's place the order. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah, so one of my friend, you know him, Adar. Adar got mm-hmm. through Akasa. So okay. yeah, the, um, the airline is paying for type rating and uh, he is experienced pilot for mm-hmm. sure. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, because of that, there can be... a short period of slow down in recruitment because of this grounding of uh, yeah uh, but okay. then but then again airlines have a plan to replace those many numbers of airplanes during that uh, grounding right and then when pratt and whitney actually solves that problem then there will be another void created for pilots Yes uh, is so what my understanding towards it. So what I believe is uh I agree with the grounding that the requirement mm-hmm. would uh like die for a bit but then again when the FDDL is opera- operational or again yeah. when the FDDL is implemented in the month yeah. of April yeah. again there'll be rise. So I yeah. think some of the other way it will balance balance and uh, when the engine issues are solved it will again Nice. Correct, correct. Because when the engine issues are solved, then that'll right now because of the engine issue. Say it has withdrawn certain number of airplanes from mm-hmm. Indian aviation uh, industry right now, right? And uh, because of pilot sure pilot mm-hmm. FDTL uh, revisions, yeah, there will be. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is way too deep. So <laughs> airlines, uh, <laughs> but so but you get what yes, I'm yes, saying, yes. right? Like, so uh, I just have to say uh, one yeah, point yeah, on this: yeah. airlines don't recruit based on their current requirement of pilots, but they project a requirement for next year, yeah. and then they recruit in this year because. Yeah. the training period for those pilots first of all selection process followed by training period goes on for about 1 year mm-hmm. even for cpl holder vacancy okay. so these pilots and vacancy which has come up right now mm-hmm. that vacancy uh, after selection process and their training they will be ready to get inducted okay. in an airline by next year yeah beginning of next year maybe so that time if they have a requirement they will hire otherwise they will be hired in due, due. course of time Correct. so Correct. that's how it goes Definitely. because um, these things are short term it should be resolved sure i mean there are months. projections and all mm-hmm. airlines have projections Correct. but then there are certain variables that cannot be projected right such as this fdtl revision mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. not actually predicted or maybe it was predicted but one cannot make certain decisions based upon such variables like uh, 
okay, maybe Pratt and Whitney grounding was predicted at one point of time, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, it it probably was, but then now again, when Pratt and Whitney engines will be operational again cannot be predicted precisely, right? So mm. that goes on, and and in that mm. case, there are certain times when pilot shortage is created, and then created as an does exist, and then there are times when it does not. So yeah, if we have a median of projection like median of required pilots per annum then yeah for sure airlines would be good mm-hmm. with that yes but then there can be variations into mm-hmm. that right yeah. yeah so whenever they uh, project the number of do pilots, i make sense mm-hmm. whatever yeah. i said yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so i i think the forecasted uh, number of pilots required by an airline so it's already forecast a year ago so mm-hmm. right now they will be working on uh, 2025 but in case of a global event in case of something related to engines or xyz issues they might have also catered for that dip or rise in the number of uh, requirements of pilots oh. yeah sure i mean there is a prediction of mm. prediction and yeah. then there is prediction to that prediction so <laughs> <laughs> so it's all permutations and know. combinations it stick to, like, <laughs> yeah yeah just uh, right no i mean bottom of the story okay brass tacks brass tacks are that yes pilot demand is there yes indian aviation is growing but that does not mean aspiring pilots can let their guard off the point is keep studying keep yourself into mm. the momentum right mm-hmm. if you are done with cpl then keep yourself into momentum and growth in industry does not mean pilots would need to work lesser or work not hard enough in order mm-hmm. to get the job first job is always always difficult and is always one of the best achievements in a pilot's career. Correct. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So the whole story of giving a counter to yes, Indian aviation is growing. That's a fact. Okay. That cannot be I mean, you can't counter that. That Indian aviation is growing. It's a fact. Correct. Right? Correct. There is evidence, news orders everything is there to support that statement that indian aviation is growing growing rapidly yes new airplanes are coming there will be demand for pilots in coming future no doubt about it does that mean that pilots fresher pilots okay yeah experienced pilots have jobs okay experienced pilots are gonna mm. get jobs like i said no uh, one of our friend got a mm-hmm. uh, job mm-hmm. in um, mm-hmm. this um Akasa. Akasa. Right. yeah so those are experienced pilots experienced pilots would not ever have no job they, they will always have jobs but fresher pilots no matter what how is the condition of the industry Mm. they would have to work hard in order to get to the first job because it is proving your ability right Uh, it's a responsibility of so many lives and airlines want that competency like Mm. the pilot has to be competent has to have the right mindset has to have the required knowledge has to have the require have Mm -hmm. required skills unless that is there then yeah if if that is there yes you are gonna get a job for got sure it, so uh, my whole point of coming to these okay that dip and and mm-hmm. all of that mm-hmm. is is to bring this conversation to a point that work hard no matter how is the situation got of it, the industry got it, got it. that is that Absolutely. was the whole point yes managing expectations mm-hmm. that's okay. that's all yeah so that's that's the whole point like work hard the message of <laughs> that is that yes, is all yes thing. i mean uh, when you see that the indian aviation industry mm-hmm. is growing mm-hmm. you can't be complacent because as you are willing to become an airline pilot you mm-hmm. have shown interest that you want to become a pilot so there are so many people like you okay who want to become a pilot yeah. but there's a difference between one who reaches the airline and one who doesn't 
and same goes with every field like if you see engineers right engineers are abandoned i would say like yeah. we both yeah. are engineers yeah. okay <laughs> i mean <laughs> we didn't set for uh, the interview and stuff uh, after my engineering i directly yeah. switched yeah. to yeah. pilot training so even in engineering field be it a doctor field the person who performs the best gets yeah. it yeah. okay same cool. as for pilot training cool. if you perform your best if you read everything if you focus on your training for 2 3 years definitely you will end up in an airline cockpit yeah sure and then again it's like the journey is relatively easier now like it used to be in her times like there was no social media no like she didn't know any airline pilot when she started okay mm-hmm. to to take advice from or anything nowadays it is easier but easier for sure but again make sure the person that you are taking advice from has achieved the dream that you are going after okay if you are taking advice from someone who has not been an airline pilot and how can that person guide you to get to the place that that person himself or herself has not gotten it so take advice but with a grain of salt <laughs> if you are uh, that is that is how it is if you are an aspiring pilot yeah i'd be biased okay like we all run c n t w a with our whole and soul okay yeah. okay like we give our blood sweat tears <laughs> and and every resource in order to run that so so yeah we would be biased for sure no doubt about it but there is a justification for that bias because of the results that cntaa students get because the students get to airlines because the amount of effort that captain neha and the whole team all of us put towards each student yes that is why that that bias is there okay and so again if you are an aspiring pilot sign up for cntaa online okay you will have uh, demo lessons uh, right there and if you want uh, further information yeah you can reach out to either of us and if you are just an aviation enthusiast thank you for staying until now okay yeah that that'll be all i think anything else yes and if you are someone who's appearing for their 12th exams wish you all the best and once you're done with the exams we'll be happy to guide you absolutely thank you absolutely yep for any guidance feel free to reach out to us thank absolutely. you absolutely thank you thank you for watching thank until you. now and uh, comment down below yeah. like subscribe <laughs> whatever that you want to do and be in touch guys thank you thank you, thank you.